Fearless Gamers, Matt here for Fearless Games, and today, as promised, we're going to be doing an open box of some of the new Eldar toys. Eldar are now finally released with 6th edition rules, and of course that means I go out and buy all some pre pretty new models to satisfy my love of collecting models and wasting money. So. We're going to go and look at a bunch of cool new Eldar things. We're not going to be looking at the Codex because I pre-ordered the limited edition and because GW kind of hates it if you don't pre-order and send it to your local Battle Bunker, which for me is in the city and a good $30 train ticket away, I, that's not happening. So, which is a shame because that probably also means that's going to affect which numbered codex I get because I didn't get the ones that shipped out on Monday, I got the ones that shipped out on Wednesday. And it's typical GW, um, you know, punishing you for not having, for them not building a battle bunker near me. Or, or you, or whichever, you know what I mean. So, let's dive right into what we've got here. And so, we first get the Eldar cards, the Psychic Powers. Um, I bought these because, like, no, I love psychic powers, and I love the little card bits and all that jazz. And so, let's dive right in and see what we got. Hey, do, 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 do. So, we first get, you know, a little fancy front cover. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cards which have a p picture of what looks like a little far sphere helmet on it. Uh, you want to get a close up on that? Okay, and these are the um, ruins of battle um, cards. There's seven of them, some pretty neat ones here. Uh, let's see. Uh, some pretty interesting ones. Um, you know, they've got one, they've got seven cards in each one, one Primaris, um, six regular psychic powers. And then we've got these guys which have this, um, really can't tell, I guess that's supposed to be like a spirit seer or something on the front there. These are called, these are, um, fate cards. Um... And then they've got, again, another Primaris power. And these guys actually have these really cool ruins on the cards themselves, giving them a little extra um, imp than you would normally. And it's pretty interesting what we've got here. And so, so far, um, I'm pretty sure Chaos... Um, out of um, So they're the ones that got the second most um, psychic powers, because I believe Chaos Demons also got... Um, I'm not sure. I think they got seven, um, 14 or something. I'm not really sure. So if anyone who plays Chaos Demons, let me know. I'm not sure if the Eldar got more Psychic Powers or not. But in total, we've got 14 Psychic Powers that are coming straight from the Eldar Codex. Okay, and let's move those out of the way. And so let's move on to our next um, little model, which is Illic Night Spear. Uh, yeah, Illic. This is the ranger character, um, special character, um, from Al um, Ally Talk. It's basically a ranger with, um, from as if the rumors are correct, a 120 inch range sniper rifle, which is ridiculous. And I picked him up because I do love having rangers in my army, and in all of the um, times that I've had them, they've always probably been some of my best units in my Eldar Codex. And so let us pop them open and see what we got inside. Let me just trim them back a little bit. This model is about in the US 20 bucks for this guy. And we get Okay, we get our classic, you know, your standard stand. Then we've got um Illich's body, he's got this really cool detail. I have to say, fine cast, say what you want about it. It produces a lot of beautiful detail. we got the little sword going across his back. We've got in the front here all the little different folds of his hood and the boots. We even have, like, boot treads on the bottom here that... And the little grenade packs and bullet um, packs going across his belts and everything. 
you, this is just a bunch of beautiful detail that you can't get anywhere. Like, say what you want about Finecast, you can't argue with the results of how detailed these guys come out with. And of course, usually in my opinion, now is the time to buy, um, it's the best time to buy Finecast models is on release day because GW makes it a priority to make sure that each one is practically perfect in every way before shipping it out. That way no one can go, oh, you know, it's a horrible thing and get some bad, bad um, reviews and publicity bef just on the release. And your next tray comes with these add-ons. It comes with his little stand, uh, this little like Eldar ruin that he's standing on, that really deadly looking sniper rifle, his hand that, you know, is kind of like perched out, and his head. And again, like I said, no, no air holes in this bad boy um, yet. Like I said, the next batch will probably have a whole bunch when they're just trying to ship them out. And for the most part, is he worth 20 bucks? I think I would have probably settled more for 15 17 dollars, but that's just me. I, it didn't stop me from buying it, so I would say that it's pretty much worth it for what you're getting, and we'll see how good, again, we'll see how good he is when I finally get to pop open the Kodaks and see what Phil Kelly gave him. And so now let's move on to our next thing, which is the Wraith Lord, the Wraith Guard kit. This is probably one thing that I got a big humorous laugh at with a lot of the forms. Everyone was always talking about how much the Wraith Knight was and how he's overpriced and blah 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 because, you know, new fancy super weapon, everyone, you know, should be at really cheap. But everyone kind of ignored that these guys got a price decrease. They normally, it, for six guys, it was 60 bucks. Um, going off the old pewter models, if you could only buy them individually, they were um, $75 for five of them. And now it's 50 for five of them, so they did get a price cut. Plus, you get the ability to turn them into the Wraith Blades as well. And if you're and if you're one of those guys that's big into magnetizing, you can magnetize them up and make them do both whenever and swap between the two whenever you need them to. And so we get that plastic off here. And one thing also I'm going to note before we go off is is the box art. Really interesting twist um, turn. I wonder if this is how we're going to see new boxes of old models and re-releases and such get turned into now. Um, I kind of I kind of miss the old, all the terrain in the background feeling, but I do kind of get a kick out of the new look. It's very reminiscent of the Dark Vengeance kit, so this way, and it's pretty interesting, you know, how Dark Vengeance was, you know, 6th edition, and so the boxes kind of mirror the 6th edition starter set which is, I think, a nice way to tie in, oh, these are new 6th edition models. Pretty neat little marketing thing that they got here. And so we pop these guys open. The first thing we get is, is a box of Terminator stands. Yep, it looks like they went from the old um, regular size troop choice stands into Terminator stands. We've got the instruction manual, which most people are probably going to just chuck this out the window because who needs instruction manuals? Um, then we've got in here, uh, no water transfer sheet. That's interesting. I would have thought they would have thrown that in there for the, um, for the dome piece on them and just so people had more water transfers. Um, but we get our first tray here and it's got all the little ghost glaives and power axes. And then we've got... Some of the, the looks like a Wraith Cannon and the D Scythe. Individual arms, little spikes, and all this good stuff. Let's see. Just taking a look here. Okay, ah, yes. What's interesting is, is they do give you, excuse me, multiple arm configurations to do different setups. So. Like I said, if you're good at magnetizing stuff, you can get the um, you can get this kit to do both setups if you want. Then our next tray, we've got more um, regular troop guys. <coughs> Excuse me. It looks like for the most part, they're throwing in enough parts 
Like, this one was like the main, you know, Wraith Blade conversion kit with one extra Wraith Guard on it. This one is two troopers. Um, two regular guys. We'll notice that they've got um, square peg, um, peg um, slotted um, bits for their legs, but circle hips to basically give them more of a guardian-like pose. So, like, their legs are fixed in one place, but you can give their... Um, bodies uh, different shapes depending on their body posing differently depending on how you want to go with them which is pretty neat and then you get another third tray with another group to build another um wraith guard so essentially you've got on two trays you got two and on another one you got one plus all the upgrades for the ghost blades and so all in all it's a really cool kit um, I definitely think it's it's worth the fifty dollars. It's a very nice um, break on. It's a very nice um, break for the wallet since all the since all the other times it was sixty seventy five dollars for Wraith Guard. Now we can get a whole squad for the same price as Terminators for the um, regular Space Marines guys, which is pretty awesome. And so let us move on to a new Eldar model. The um, the Hemlock Wraith Fighter and the Crimson Hunter. Now, uh, I'm just going to outright say I'm not a big fan of the fact that they call it the Hemlock, the, um, that Hemlock Wraith Fighter. Um, throwing in the word Wraith Fighter makes it a little bit okay, but, you know, I pl you know because of Battlefleet Gothic, the Hemlock was the name of one of their starships, and so why? It's just name recycling, I know, and I'm basically making a big deal out of nothing, but... I'm getting over it, you know, it's starting slowly growing on me. But this kit will do the Wraith Fighter and the Crimson Hunters, the brand new um, Aspect Warrior set that we got for the Eldar. Which makes a little sense, finally, Eldar getting the idea of, you know, why don't we train people to fly our, to pilot our vehicles instead of just throwing any Tom, Dick, or Harry in there. So, they're starting to move up in their terms of fight and style. And so, we're going to open this guy up um, in the US this is um, 65 bucks so we'll see what we get inside there and also I forgot to mention this on the um, Wraith Guard kit new thing that they're doing is, is before they used to say on the list okay this is um, the different colors that you got this time around they actually went and went over how they painted them in a um, in a more detailed setup like we've got so like here okay that's most likely um this guy here so it's you know they tell you his base his glaze and then his um highlight or layer same deal here same with the black and same with the um with the um cream undercoat so that's really nice because usually they just went okay these colors were used and they never told you what order or what pattern they were doing in so it's nice that they started throwing that in there. Um, it would have been nice if in the, um, in the, um, forgive me, the, um, latest white dwarf, they did an easy metal on this guy, but can't really complain too much for what we got. I'll probably end up not even doing it the way that they do it anyway. And so we open this bad boy up. We got our clear flight stand, which I love how they put these little pegs here and they're absolutely useless. Why didn't they just put two pegs on the bottom? That way we can snap them and have them always centered how they're supposed to be which would then confine to say like a battle foam bag which does them standard how GW does them. But and then we go and we get our first frame which has got looks like the bits to craft it into either the um, Wraith Hunter or the Crimson um, Fighter and we've got ourselves the pilot um, the different helmets, I kind of like the different helmets for them with like with the spirit seers and all that stuff up there. Um, we got the jet engines, we got the extra horns for engines and little horns and fins. We got the co cockpit, we got the guardian's body, and we got the different weapons that you can outfit this guy in here. And let's see, it looks like... And there's the Psychic Bomber, the Psychic Bomb that they have, like, the Mind Shackle thing um, that they've got. And we've got the two Bright Lances, the Pulsar, the two D-Scythes, and the two Star Cannons. So they basically give you almost everything that 
sets up the fighter and defines it as what it is in this one, Sprit. Then we've got the actual hull. The hull piece is, is just your standard. It's got, you know, the bottom, top, and the wings, and little cover pieces for underneath it. Nothing really fancy there. Detail-wise, it's just as you would expect from plastic um, models from Games Workshop. Then we've got regular flight stands as normal. And we've got the um, instruction manual. And they send you with one clear um, piece. And again, no water transfer sheet in this one. It's getting very weird. I mean, usually they throw in at least one, if not like a small one, to fit, you know, what you're getting in the case, which is very weird that they kind of stop, stop doing that, which is very odd. Um, Price-wise, 65 it's... I think it's pushing it. I think 60 would have been better for this, but again, I bought it. I'm not really going to be complaining because... If the price of these models was really the big key factor in games work in me playing Warhammer 40,000, I would have stopped playing Warhammer 40,000 quite some time ago. Um, but all in all, I do like the fact that it's only two frames because it makes it easier to figure out what pieces go where and stuff. You're not hunting down like with a drop pod where there's like six frames or actually, okay, like maybe four, but still it's like, oh, where, where, what bits came from what and everything. I like that's nice and simple. My biggest gripe is, is that there's no water transfer sheet on this guy. And, um, yeah, that's it. Um, I was planning on getting the Wraith Knight, but unfortunately there just wasn't going to be happening. I pre-ordered one. I was the fourth guy to pre-order it. They only got three, so... Unfortunately, that's going to be it for now, but once I get that Wraith Knight in, I will do a open box of it. So, thank you all for... Oh, um, hi, Mr. Bonesinger. So, um, to what do I owe the honor? Oh, you want to give me a gift? Um, oh, gee, not nice. What is it? Oh, um, this is neat, um, what is it? Let's see, uh, a ghost plus a bone equals a ghost bone. Oh, wraith, wraith bone. Okay. This is Wraithbone, so that's what it looks like. That's kind of interesting. It doesn't look anything like how I thought it would. Oh. This is so awesome. So I, okay, I I got a wraith knife for you to guys to show you. So let's go on and dive right into this bad boy before he comes back and decides to change his mind. So here we are. It's a um, okay. It's the wraith knife. Um, it's a hundred and fifteen dollars. Um. Everyone's been talking about, like, how, you know, if it's really worth that much or ha that jazz. And we're going to find out. Um, Stat-wise, right now, we don't know, but it stands nine inches tall, which is three inches shorter than a Reverend Titan, which is the small Eldar Titan. So this is guy is bordering on the apocalypse size with this, with this thing. So let us um, open it up. The most interesting thing you'll note is that he's not shrunk wrap. Um, I don't know why they decided to go with that. And he's all one box, very similar to, say, like the, um, the Wraith Guard box set. 
And so let's go open this up and see what we got here. So of course we first get the instruction manual, so you know how to build them. Again, probably not going to use it. Then we've got, ah, oh, finally, a water transfer sheet. Can we get a close-up of that? Okay, this is the new water transfer sheet um, that GW made. It incorporates some new things like some of the craft worlds that they've mentioned before and haven't given us before. Um, some Crimson Hunter, some Crimson Hunter um, or Crimson Warrior, I forgot right now, my mind's blanking. Um, markings. They also gave us a lot more troop icons and such. Actually, a really neat thing is if you got the latest White Dwarf, they actually kind of key code what each of these symbols are, in case you were ever wondering what symbol is used for what on Eldar vehicles and the like, which is very nice of them to do. I just wish that they put this water transfer sheet in things you would most likely buy multiple of, like the Fighter, or maybe even the Wraith Guard, but I don't know what they're thinking. And then we go, and let's get the stand out of here. The stand is a standard flight stand that you would see in most of the Eldar flyers or any other army flyers. And then let's dive into all the different bits. So, ah, here's the first frame. It's got a bunch of the arms, the hands, the shimmer shield, scatter shield, the chest plate, that wicked, wicked looking um, sword, which is roughly the length of a rhino, if not longer. And look at that beautiful detail work in that. They've got the nice little uh, notches in the blade, the ruins leading up to the spirit stone, the different fingers, and they even threw in enough detail where the fingers are actually separated so you can see the handle behind it and all the individual joints. Um, one thing that I find very odd is, is that they made the arms all one piece, in like very much like a Wraith Lord, so they kind of limit the amount of um, customability in terms of posing you can do with his arms, which I found a little weird for them to do. Um, they've got hands, which again have all this beautiful detailed joint work on them. And what's nice is, is they give you a pair of each for each side. So you've got a right hand open palm and a right hand closed fist and a left hand open palm and a left and a left hand closed fist, giving you the ability to essentially control what kind of pose his hands stay in when you build them. And again, if you're probably, if you're, and they did give them, um, what's interesting, little ball joints, so they can even be different posed angles, I don't, um, with that, which is pretty cool. And so, let's see, that's one frame. Then we've got frame number two, which is, looks like the, um, weapons and parts of the, um, chest piece, like we got the neck, Looks like the shoulder pads right there, or the um, um, or the um, thigh pads. We've got what looks like the framing for the weaponry. Um, I'm assuming that's part of the chest piece. We've got one of the sunbeam cannons, so it looks like he only can have one of those. Two wraith cannons, two, and then you have enough bits to do two star cannons, um, a scat, two scatter lasers, two shuriken. And, a pulse, and what looks like, I don't know what this guy is, it looks like a D-cannon, but like in terms of similar shape, it's kind of got the same type of style, but there's differences, subtle differences, that I can't really tell what that piece is. I will have to wait until I get the, um, get the actual um, Kodax to see what that is. Again, really great looking detail. What I love about it also is it's like they've got... They've got detail not only on the top, not only on one side, but they have detail on both sides. So you could, so depending whatever type of angle you put these pieces in, which most likely would be in multiple types of angles, you're covered. It's not just like a blank piece that, oh, that's clearly where the model was not detailed. They went into that factor of what if this part is visible, which is that one little extra mile that GW has been going down with a lot of their weaponry lately. That just makes it all the better for it. 
and so then we've got this guy, which is the head, the back fins, and the legs. The legs are the most, um, how shall we say, um, poseable, because they've got the hip, the joints different. They've got the one in the knee, the one in the ankle, and one in the hip. Um, they've got parts of the chest plate here, um, the feet, and again, the heads, which... The headpiece, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, not big fans of. It's kind of like a throwback to the old Eldar Knight, which is what this um, vehicle is, I think, supposed to be a reboot of. So they kind of did like a throwback to the armor cast version of the um, model. And what's neat is, is they did put in these little, like, lock pins for, like, locked poses of his legs, but they're easily snipped off so you can then have full range of detail with of posability and they actually kind of built the kit in preparation for that which was nice and it looks like again that the feet are on like a ball socket setup which is really great that they did that and all in all i think this kit is really awesome 130 to 115 dollars for it um the 15 seems a little weird. I would have thought they would have just capped it at 100 and call it a day. Um, but, you know, it's not 130 like some of the, like some um, War Machine stuff. And I've seen model kits go for like 120 for that and have less detail and they're charging you more for the size of the thing. Um, so, all in all, I think it's worth it. Especially since you get the stinking... Um, Water transfer sheet, which, again, why isn't this in every kit? I just don't understand that. Um, one thing that I'm a little upset about is, is some of the um, swords um, I need to do some clever markings with because my craft world has a sword going through a heart, and I, there, I just have to do some clever manipulation to get them off of there. But it's no big deal. But like I said... They sh this should be in more kits than what it's in. Because, again, yeah, okay, it's in the really big guy because it's a really big water transfer sheet, but it easily fits in the other um, boxes except the Wraith Guard one. But again, are they really thinking people are going to buy like three or four of these guys? I'm thinking the average person is probably going to have one of these. So you're only giving them one water transfer sheet. Yet you said in your um in your white dwarf, oh the water transfer sheet is to make the ruins easier to paint on. Well, if they're to make everything paint easier, should have been on more models. But done with my rant on that. All in all, this kit is great. Um, between all of them, I have no favorite. Um, I think all of them are really good in their own way. Um, Price-wise, the only one that I think you, you could have probably gotten away with charging a little bit less is um, Night Spear. But, again, all the kits are beautifully detailed. They, again, I say that a lot. Um, Price-wise, I didn't feel ripped off out of anything. The only thing that I, like I said, is the water transfer sheets is only in one of the boxes. Box-wise, it's pretty interesting how they're going with this new setup, especially with the Wraith Knight here. But, like, and again, I like how they were doing the, um, the color setup to try and help you, um, paint the army the way that, um, Easy Cat, Easy Metal did it. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and tune in next time. The next, when I finally get the Eldar Codex, I will do a... Um, codex review of it. So, until next time, fearless gamers, take care.